Hey everyone, I'm back and better than ever. Just kidding, I'm still the same old mess that you know and love and maybe also hate. I am so excited because today I get to actually film an Animal Crossing video because I finally got my capture card back after two months because apparently according to Elgato, there was a delay at the warehouse. <laughs> I don't know, I just find that really funny. Like, what is the tea? What happened at the warehouse? Was there some kind of a, like a, an altercation? Was it a little, I hope it was like a little crow that was in there hiding like the delivery truck driver's keys or something. I don't know, just make it worth it for me. Give me a, the scoop. Like, don't just say there was a delay at the warehouse. Like, tell me what the delay was, please, so I can at least laugh. I don't know. Either way, I finally have my capture card back. We still, if you can even believe it, need to kick Daisy out. I can't believe it. There's that cricket, by the way. If you've seen the video uh, with all the scandals on my island and with Kyle getting harassed by the cricket, there he is. He's a prisoner. He is currently in custody and serving two consecutive life sentences for ruining Kyle's day. So you can rest assured that the community is safe from this bastard. Anyway, uh, we still need to kick Daisy out. She is still here hanging on by a thread. So we really need to get her ass out so that we can finally go on our Anka hunt once and for all. And happy spooky season. It's literally the season of the witch. It's here. My favorite time of year, obviously, as a Libra, but I mean, honestly, everybody's favorite time of the year, right? Like, come on. So yeah, today we're gonna focus on applying all the methods I've been reading up on and that you have so generously uh, given me in the comments and reaching out through DMs on how to kick this bitch Daisy out. We're gonna be trying to get her ass out once and for all. Where is, <gasps> are you kidding me? Is it really gonna be that easy? Daisy, don't tease me like this. Do I swear to God, if this bitch is like, I accidentally bought two toilets. Can you, can you take one off my hands? Strike to claim it, a strike to claim it. And he got it! That's right! Who do you think you are? I am! I can't even believe it. Magic, she's magic. I put a spell on you. And now you're gone, gone, gone. So long, I put a spell on you. <laughs> and it was strong, so strong, so strong, so strong. Get the fuck out of my town, Miss Daisy, once and for all. So I can bring Queen Anka home, I put a spell on you. And now you're gone. Daisy's out of here. She's out. Daisy's out. <laughs> yeah. Daisy has been kicked off the island. They said it couldn't be done. I don't want to alarm you, but I am actually a Sanderson sister. I'm sorry, I'm the good one though. I, that's why I wasn't in the movie, because I don't eat children. I like children. I help children. I teach children how to be a witch as well. The only people who hate me are evangelical Christians because I am corrupting the, the youth. However, Daisy's leaving. Can you believe it? I mean, what is going on with, the, with my powers? I guess they're I guess they're really strong today, which is a good thing. That means that Anka will be mine shortly. I, I just love this. I think it's because it's Libra season. I love this. I really do. Um, wow, Marina, you've really let things go over here. What the hell? Is Marina dead in there? What the hell? She never she's never like this. I didn't even time travel that much at all. This is the last time I'm picking up for your ass. I'm just kidding. I'm her slave for life. Let's check on her. I just, I get worried, you know? It's it's kind of like a, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's affected me that she almost died. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Marina. Okay, she's she's got some kind of an illness. She's got some kind of an, I can't. Oh my God. We're off to a great start. Marina is, I swear to God, every single fucking time I time travel. I think I time traveled a week, maybe a week or less. And they let, they let me down again. They let me down again. I th I think this is actually evidence that Sherb is actively trying to kill this woman. Sherb is actively poisoning my neighbor, Marina. I will not stand for it. I will not do it. Oh my God, she's dying right before our very eyes. Marina, I will be right back. Oh my God, get me some medicine. I can't believe this is happening again. Blanche, move. Timmy, Tommy, give me everything you've got everything and anything that you think can help her pull through this. It's either a chronic illness or she's being poisoned by Sherb. And she seems like a pretty healthy gal, so I don't really know what to think. Marina, I'm I'm right here. 
just breathe, okay? Just breathe. I will, I'm gonna stick this big needle in you like they do in the movies, like right into her heart to like jumpstart her heart. Oh, Marina. Oh, Marina, I'm so glad that you're in recovery. She's in recovery. It'll take a while. She's got a long road ahead of her. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Marina, we love you so much. Oh my God, I'm setting up a fundraiser for Marina. Y'all, this is already, I guess the world is like, oh, she's got her capture card back. Let's fuck it up. Let's make it all crazy. Never a dull moment. I'm questioning Sherb. I've got a few questions for Sherb. Sherb, do you mind sitting down? You mind if I come in? Amanda, um, watch it. Why? Is there blood everywhere? You don't want me to contaminate the crime scene? What are you doing? A spooky standing lamp? Okay. If you're going to give me a spooky DIY, then we can reschedule the interrogation. What else is, is everybody else accounted for and alive and okay out here? Palm, what's going on? Why the hell didn't you check on Marina? I told you to keep an eye on her. I don't know, I'm here to, 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 to question the community, to see what happened while I was gone. Are you kidding me? You know what, I'm pushing him back into the water. Drown, go off and drown, I don't care. I don't, I, 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 I refuse to acknowledge that shit, I really do. Speaking of Gulliver, the reason that I was gone for so long, quote unquote, is because I did actually painstakingly make an entire video reacting to the Animal Crossing movie, definitely falling within the parameters of fair use. And every single time I uploaded it, re-uploaded it after taking out what they said was a problem, Nintendo claimed it every single time, not just claimed it, because I would've been cool with them claiming it and taking all the money, I don't care. They straight up blocked it every single time, blocked it so that I couldn't post it on YouTube, period. However, it is on my Patreon. So if you wanna watch my review of the Animal Crossing movie, I can't even, I don't even have the words. I don't even have the time or the words to explain to you what a ride that movie is. It's got twists, it's got turns, it makes you laugh, makes you cry, it's got romance, it's got heartbreak, it's got elements of horror, it's got action, it's got adventure, it's, it's inspirational, it's bad, it's good, it's everything rolled into one hot mess. So you can watch that at any level on my Patreon, no ads either. <laughs> so uh, definitely check that out if you're bored. But yeah, I'm just kind of, again, checking to make sure everybody's friggin' alive out here. Gonna go get some Jackos. I saw we had a stack of Jackos for sale out here. I love a spooky season. I think it's perfect that Anka is gonna come. Can you get the hell out of my way? Thank you. I think it's perfect that we're gonna have Anka with us for the spooky season. Can you imagine what she's gonna be for Halloween? Yeah, she's, she's gonna really bring the, the entire Halloween vibe together for us. Cause she's just such a spectacle. I don't know, anybody else dead or dying? Is everybody accounted for? Is everybody alive and okay? Blanche, what? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I'm so sorry, I was like, stop thinking. Hello ladies, everybody okay in here? Just making, doing a wellness check on all my, all my residents, you know, cause I can't go, I can't be gone for like four days without people starting to, to bite the dust. Magic Academy robe, what the hell is that? I wanna go to the Magic Academy. Maybe the Magic Academy isn't transphobic. Hmm. I had to time travel a couple days just to get Daisy the hell out of here. And as fate would have it, because my life is a joke, it's Goose's birthday again. Goose really did get two fucking birthdays this year. Whatever. I just, it's hard for me to believe that he's a Libra. Oh, my pumpkins! <gasps> That's the good thing about time. Look at this big ass pumpkins. I can't believe it. I'm picking them. I'm picking some pumpkins. I really hate the green ones. They remind me of green tomatoes. Oh my God, look at my pumpkins. What a surprise. So yeah, that's the fun part about having to time travel a little bit is we get to see some, some festivities before the hunt. Like everybody else, like basically everyone on earth. It's not like a quirky thing to love Halloween, but I love Halloween. I dress up every single year. I've been an adult for a while now and I still dress up every year. Last year I was Mothman. The year before that I was Han Solo. Then I was Ash. Uh, from the Evil Dead, and then I was um, a fruit bat, then I was a manta ray. You know, I've just had a lot of costumes. Oh my God, look how cute, there's like a little boo ghost. No way. Yeah, so we're gonna be festive today because guess what? I figured it out. I think I've talked about this before. When I absolutely zero in, I'm like, I'm getting on God. I like manifest the hell out of her. I don't always get it, but when I'm subtle about it, when when the thought is there, when I'm like, I'm going out for Anka, blah, 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 but it's there and it's subtle, that's when it tends to happen. You know, like I didn't find Kyle. 
because I was so hard on the Kyle thing. I was manifesting him too hard. Didn't find Anka in the one that was completely all about ancient Egypt, the, the life and times of King Tut. Didn't find Anka on that one. Found a great villager though. The Marina one, I barely even mentioned her. Just kind of started to talk about her, but it was very subtle and then she pops up. I didn't mention Shur, but I had mentioned him before. I wanted him, he pops up, which was of course the largest regret of my life. I was gonna be playing the part of like a high priest, a freaking scribe. I was gonna be like chanting freaking incantations and shit, trying to like invoke Bastet. I think we need to cool it on that. I have an Anka cosplay I was gonna wear too. I'm gonna do that more for Halloween. But we're gonna do a lot of, I'm gonna do so much Halloween stuff, it's not even funny. So this isn't even like I'm wasting a video on, on Halloween shit with my Anka hunt. My island is gonna be, it's gonna be spirit Halloween basically. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We're gonna be Halloween town. Hello, Calabar's Revenge. <laughs> Watch out, beep beep. I love that movie. When I was little, that was the kind of shit I would like throw my life into. I'd be like, if I could be anyone, I'd be fucking Marnie, dude. Imagine being like a normal ass kid and then your grandma's a witch. Not fair. Not even close to fair. Sorry. I promise I'm not gonna take too much of your time doing this stuff. I just wanna do a few, okay? I gotta go get some candy. And I wanna show you some of my Halloween stuff because it's my time to shine. It's Libra season. Can you just let me be a Libra in Libra season, please? Could you just let, I've been waiting my whole year for this and it's been a long one, let me tell ya. So look at my little welcome plate that I got from Flick. I knew as soon as he gave me that shit, I'm like, that is my Halloween bag. That's gonna go right on my door. Then I got my pretty moon rug and then I got a little skelly. I actually fucking hate skeletons. I think they're the most horrifying thing possible. One of my most scary things in my life. Not a lot scares me. Skeletons, uh, I would abs- I'm, I'm pr I promise. There's not a lot of things that would be coming at me and I would actually can have a heart attack and die right there. Like an alien, even like Leatherface with a chainsaw, I think I could probably outrun him and outsmart him and even appeal to his gentle nature because I feel like a Leatherface is very misunderstood. But that's a whole, that's a whole nother story for another time. A skeleton though, if a, a fucking skeleton was running at me, I would, I would give up. I would just give up right then and there. The worst part about a skeleton is that there's one right inside me. I'm a skeleton all along. I hate that. Ah, oh, it's so scary. I hate it, but yeah, it's Halloween related. So then we get the webs up there. And then of course my baby Jack, he's actually so cute. I love him so much. I cannot wait to see him. I'm all over the place. Cause I also, I want to do a spooky outfit. Let's just put a spooky outfit on real quick. Okay, just bear with me. You guys already know what you signed up for, okay? I wanna get you into the spirit because it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm gonna have so many, so many custom codes for you. I love it. I'm a big fan of Boo Ghosts and I call them Boo Ghosts. I don't know if that's like what everybody calls them. My husband said it's not. He said it's something I made up, but I think that's what they're called universally. Let me know. Let me know what you call these little guys because there's a ghost. There's like an apparition, like a specter, like a freaking poltergeist. And then there's a boo ghost, which is not real. Like if you see a real ghost in with like a heat sense, with heat sensing technology, it's not gonna be a cute little guy with a sheet and like a little scary woo face, you know? That's not a real ghost, they're a boo ghost. They're a cute little like baby ghost, you know, like a fun little cartoon ghost. And so I call them boo ghosts. I love a boo ghost, not so much a ghost ghost. Actually, no, I take it back. I love a ghost. I love any ghost that wants to come to me and scare the fuck out of me and traumatize me for life, but also show me that ghosts are real. Please come, please come, please do it. I invite you to do it. I actually fucking dare ya. Do it if you're bad. Do it if you're a real ghost. <laughs> you're killing it, you little boo ghost bitch. Look at you, uh, too much. You know you know how I am. I like to keep it subtle. Like I wanna still be able to, to pop into Target if I have to, you know, <laughs> without freaking people out. I'm just gonna go simple boo ghost. Should I wear these? Cause they're kind of boo ghosty. I think I'm just gonna go with my reg my regs. Look at her, she's ready. She's so cute. Wait, is Anka gonna think I'm stupid? <sighs> I don't know, I just want her to know I love Halloween. I think the white pants might be too much. Maybe I should do black pants and white shoes. Let's do that. I know you're not supposed to wear like white shoes after Labor Day or some shit. Who the fuck said, Karen? Karen said that? Okay, Karen. This is perfect. It's very cash and very go and very spooky. Very cash, very spooky, very cute. Love it. 
And it's not screaming, I want Anka, but obviously everyone here knows that I want Anka. I'm just not gonna make a, we're gonna see. It's an experiment, okay? Because last time I talked about ancient Egypt, the whole ass time, and I found Lily. She's never even heard of ancient Egypt. I had to tell her about it. I had to be the one to break it to Lily that, that a friggin' hippo crunched King Tut. And then she's like, who's King Tut? And I'm like, never mind, Lily. What are you doing? Leave her alone. Leave her alone. <laughs> Bianca, be careful. Would ya? God, is Marina dying again? I do have to fucking check on her every day, apparently. Apparently, she just can't be trusted to stay alive. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling well enough to be eating a whole ass donut. My home's your home, cutie. We're moving in together. You know what? I do need to give Marina some shit, though. I need to give her a citation because I'm pretty, I'm actually kind of low key mad at her. So I have made her two shell wreaths. Look at this gorgeous shell wreath that I was nice enough to collect all the shells for and make for Marina twice to put on her door. And every time I give it to her, she's like, oh, this is so great, I'm gonna put it on my door. And then she takes it the f off, what the hell? That's so shady. Sherb, I'm on to you, buddy. I'm on to you, bucko. Don't think I'm not. God. Anyway, I think we should just get started, right? That's basic, oh, I, I gotta check and see what spooky items for sale today. Oh my God, so cute. What? I love Halloween. I don't know what I'm gonna be this year though. What are you guys gonna be for Halloween? Let me know in the comments, please. No, honestly, I really honestly wanna know. I'm not even saying that like, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Like, no, just please. Cause I, oh, I don't have any money. Imagine Tom Nook knowing damn well I have $10 million in the bank and yet he ain't willing to give me a damn line of credit. I'm sorry, what? I paid all my loans on time, sweetheart. I don't think so. Ugh, I can't even sell this stupid thing. I got it in I got it in one of those flying balloons. I think it might be haunted though. It better be haunted. Don't waste my fucking time. <laughs> wow, I'm so broke. I'm pocket broke. Bank broke? <laughs> Never heard of her. Wait, what? I'm only allowed one piece of candy a day? Excuse me? What are you trying to say? Why are you limiting my 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 candy intake? Fuck you, Nook Twins. I'm done. This is actually so you guys have it's none of your business how much candy I eat. How dare you? You're not my you're not my doctor. You're not my dentist. You're not my parents. How dare you? I'm I'm mad. I'm mad at the Nook Twins. <laughs> I can't I'm boycotting Nook's cranny. What? One piece of candy a day? Bullshit. Absolutely. What are, how am I supposed to do my DIY? What did I get in the mail? It better be fucking candy from the Nook Twins. I don't know. Um, she got me a magazine. A magazine. <laughs> These have been sitting in here for quite a while. Just waiting for the right day. I hope it doesn't take us much, but we'll see. I'm gonna just fill my pockets with them. Let's start with 50. What do we got, 50? We're gonna go hunt some villagers. One villager in particular. And I'm pretty, 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 pretty sure that I'm Anka or bust. I, I have to be, I, I, absolutely Anka or bust. It has to be, yes, yep. It's Anka or bust. Anka is going into Daisy's house. Whether anybody likes it or not, I don't care who I, who I find out there. I really don't care. I don't care if Kyle himself got himself stuck on an island. You found your way out here, find your way back. Kyle. Yeah, I don't think there's, I, I can't think of anybody who is gonna derail the Anka thing. So I'll say that once and then and then I'll just kinda, then we'll just kinda go from there. And because I didn't wanna make it all about Anka, I actually did ask my patrons to ask me some questions for a little Q&A. And so we'll go through those and if I run out today and if I'm still hunting, then I'll maybe go on Twitter and ask. Anyway, let's see who's on this island. Ew, Peggy, is that her name, Peggy? Peggy, what's up Peggy? Look at all these weeds. God, I haven't been on a mystery island in so damn long that seeing these weeds is kind of jarring to me. Yep, Peggy, you've heard of me? Who the hell told Peggy about me? is my question. By the way, Wilbur, hey, long ass time no see. How you been? What if I find Raymond on this hunt? Wouldn't that be weird? I just feel like I never, I've never found Raymond. I've never seen him. I've never even seen him in real life. Like I've never been to anyone's island who has him. I don't know if he's real. He could be made up for all I know. Y'all could be lying to me. Is Raymond real? Let's see. Okay, who could it be? Oh, it's Paolo. Yep, I see you, Paolo. Yikes. He is doing his own damn thing. Fucking Adam Brody's dad from the OC over here. What was his name? <laughs> okay, so I love this first question. So my girl Savannah asked, 
If you were an Animal Crossing villager, which species and personality type do you think you would be? Oh my God. Like, I kind of feel like somebody else needs to give me this because I'm going to be too nice to myself or something. Like, I'm over here like, I'm a wolf. <laughs> I can't, I, I think that needs to be off limits. I don't think anybody's allowed to assign themselves a wolf. What would I be? God, what would I be? Let's think. I kind of want to be an anteater. It, I don't know if it's what I want to be or what I would be though, you know? Let's see, um, gosh. Would I be an alligator? Would I be a, the first like really cute alligator? Hmm, you guys are gonna have to help me down in the comments. Let me know, cause I'm gonna have to throw a few ideas around before I land on one. You know what, let's start with type. Maybe we should start with type. So would I be peppy, you think? No, right? No. But I'm not normal either, and I can't be snooty. Don't tell me I'm snooty. I only shop at Sephora when I have the money. I'm a wet and wild kind of girl. Bob! Are you kidding me? What's up? I can't believe Third Island, Bob. Third Island and she pulls a Bob. Are we kidding? I don't think we are. The third island, and she pulls a bob. Right back at you, Bob. Whatever the fuck that means, right back at you. That look, that look, he, he just fried me. He fried me with his eyes. Bob, I gotta get out of here because I'm only supposed to invite Anka, but I get it. I get the whole Bob thing. A lot of people are like, what's the hype with Bob? Um, Have you seen him? Would you look at him for two seconds maybe? Then you'll see the hype. The hype with Bob. Are you kidding? Bob is all hype. Bob is hype, he's walking hype. Anyway, back to me. Would I be lazy? No. I think they're adorable, but I'm not that cute. In no world or version of reality, even if there are millions upon millions of dimensions and alternate realities, there's not a single one where I'm a jock. Not a single one, okay? Would I be a smug? You think I'd be a smug? Am I smug? I think actually I might be a smug, right? Cause it's kind of a shtick that I do where I'm like, I'm the best even though, so, Spoiler alert, I'm definitely not smug in real life, like at all. Someday I'll tell you the extent of it, but it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty much not a thing that's even possible for me to, 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 to truly do. I feel like I jive the best with the smug villager personality. They're like sarcastic. They're kind of like charming. I'm not calling myself charming, but you know what I mean? They're like very insecure, but like they, they, beef themselves up to be charming and that's me and oh no speak of the fucking devil speak of the goddamn devil here he is this man will wreck you he'll wreck your whole life he'll wreck your credit he'll wreck your soul and he'll make it look like an accident i love tex i really do i think he's <laughs> He's so handsome. He's just this dude, you know, he's so short. He's about a foot shorter than me and, and I'm and I'm tripping for him. No one but Tex could, could get me to that to that point. No one but Tex. He is not my type in any way. You know, I like him lanky. I like a lankster. Skinny jeans, lanky boy. <laughs> uh, Tex is not that man. Tex is not that man, but something about him. Something about him, look at us. He's just, he's a bad boy. Yeah, he's dangerous, we already know. You guys already know how I feel about Tex. He's dangerous, he's a danger to society, but he's a sweet guy, you know? And that's what I love about the smug villagers is that they're they're pretty sweet. They're sarcastic, they're a little bit insecure, and they're not very sure of themselves even though they act super sure of them. That's me in a nutshell, it really is. Like They act like they're super confident and totally the best, but deep down, there's no one who hates themselves more. <laughs> I can assure you. And that's totally me in a nutshell. I think that's why I am drawn to so many smug villagers. Yeah, I'm, a sm I'm the first ever smug girl. I'm owning it. And I would love to be the first ever bat villager. I love bats. I think a bat villager would be very cute. Can I be the first ever bat villager, perhaps? If not, maybe I will be, let's think. So we've got alligators. I think I could be an alligator, like a cute one, you know? I think I would like to be an anteater. Oh, it's Grizzly. Hi, Grizzly. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you too, Grizzly. God, that was so cold. So then we've got, okay, so speaking, <laughs> speaking of Grizzly, the bear villagers. Nope, not for me. Wouldn't want to be a bear villager. A little bird, uh, no, not me. I'm too doofy, I don't know. A bull, no. Ooh, maybe a cow though. I do love a cow, you know how much I love my cows. I love cows so much. Matt showed me this, vi Matt shows me cow videos and I cry every single time. He's trying to, he's, he's doing his best to find a video of, of a cow that won't make me cry. I love cows so much. I 
love them. I love them so freaking much. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to express in words how much I love cows. I just love them. I think they're so gentle and beautiful. Cat villagers, kind of like the one that I'm looking for, is a cat. See, like little subtle nods here and there. Nothing too overpowering. Just kind of keeping her, keeping the energy. I think I'm not nearly good enough to be a cat villager. Not even close. Not even close. The cats are just on the same, they're on the same level as the wolves, basically. Ah, uh, Greta. Is that Greta? Is that her name? Yo, Greta. Okay, Greta. Love you too. Definitely not a mouse. You can you can count the mouse out of it. If anybody assigns me a mouse, I'm blocking you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I just don't want to be a mouse. I'm tall. I'm 5'7". I can't be a mouse. Not a kangaroo. Not an eagle. Not good enough. Definitely not a cub. A deer, maybe? No. No. Because I just thought about all the girl deer. Is there a single girl deer that isn't an absolute smoke show? that isn't a baddie. Who is a deer girl that isn't a baddie? That's my question, let's look. There's freaking Deirdre, Diana, Fauna, Fuchsia. Yeah, there's four deer ladies and every single one of them is a whole ass 10. I'm sorry, I could, I could never. Oh, speaking of cows, see what I mean when I'm a little bit subtle? Oh, I love Tipper. I want a cow so bad. Like a part of me wants to live in like a little neighborhood, you know, with like a sidewalk and stuff. Cause I want to feel like a part of something, you know, I want to have like neighbors and like live in like a nice little cul-de-sac. And another part of me, a stronger part of me, wants to have a big farm sanctuary. And I know I'm gonna have it someday either way, whether it's like my retirement plan or what, I gotta have like a farm where I rescue animals, obviously. Obvious, I mean, like I mean, come on. And I gotta get some cows. I really wanna save like a mommy and a baby, you know, cause like, it's so sad for them when their babies get taken away from them. Like I'm not, I'm not being preachy here, but I do wanna let people know, cause I'm surprised when people don't know this, that cows do have to be pregnant to, to lactate. A lot of people don't even realize that. My husband, when we first went vegan two years ago, he came to me and he was, we were both doing research, you know, I was, I knew a lot of this stuff already. And he came to me and he's like, Amanda, I didn't realize that cows don't just lactate their whole life. Like they don't produce milk normally. They're just like us. They're just like any other animal. Like they produce milk when they are pregnant and when they're, when they give birth. So they have to be constantly pregnant their whole life. and. It's really sad because as soon as their baby's born, it gets taken away. And, you know, they have a very, just like any other, especially mammals, they have a very inst a strong instinct to protect their baby and be with their baby. And the baby has a strong instinct to be with the mom. So it's really sad when they take them away. You know, the moms like chase down the people and try to get their baby back. It's really sad. And milk isn't really that good for you. Anyway, a lot of people, it makes you feel yucky. There's a lot of really great alternatives out there. And yeah. Anyway, ah, what's her name again? Something. I love the little bow ears. So cute. Hi, fab to meet you. I'm Penelope. Of course you are. <laughs> again, no judgment. I get everybody's situations, but I would love for it to be more accessible for everyone to get milk and other things from different places that don't cause as much suffering. Because I will admit, you know, there's, for mass production of anything, whether it's meat or dairy or soy or nuts or produce, unfortunately, mass production equals habitat destruction and suffering. It sucks, it really does. The only true way that you can do no harm is by like literally just growing your own crops and living off the land. Like, it's, it's really hard. So when people come to me like, well, your vegan food also harms life. It's like, yeah, but it does, do a lot less harm statistically because not only do you have to clear land and do all the stuff that you do for vegan food for livestock um, but you also do have to harm livestock quite significantly as well so again you know I, that's why and a lot of people don't like this this is gonna ruffle some feathers and we'll talk about me and Matt have a lot of like kind of unpopular vegan opinions that we're gonna do we're gonna we're working on getting a podcast together because we have a lot of stuff we like to talk about so we are gonna be doing that um, and we'll, we'll go more into this, but basically I do support, and I wanna be clear on this, not trophy hunting. Trophy hunting can suck my ass, okay? There's nothing good about trophy hunting. I don't care that people are like, oh, it's for conservation though. No, 
No, we shouldn't be having the the, the only way that millionaires will, will give money to, to save species is if they get to kill one. Fuck that forever. I hate that. No, trophy hunting is bullshit. Nobody in their right nobody should be killing elephants, rhinos, animals that are actually suffering. But people who go out and they kill an animal and they actually eat it and use it and they don't sit there and take a picture with it and use it as this like macho man moment. People who actually go out and take one animal that's not endangered, as sad as it is, it makes me sad, but it's so much better than the meat and dairy industry. Oh my God, Goldie, so much better. So yeah, I support hunters that hunt for the purpose of getting their own meat instead of buying it from factory farms. It's the lesser of two evils for sure. Goldie, I love you. She's so cute. I feel like her and Daisy could be sisters. So cute, so sweet, so special. All right, what's the next question? Reliz asked, how did I meet my husband? And how does he remind me of Kyle? That, oh, I love this question. And like I said before, we're gonna do a podcast, so we'll go into even more. Oh, Shari. Hello, Miss Shari, how you been? Love, love the pee feet. Did you know that that's like, um, so squirrel monkeys, they actually will wash their hands and feet? In urine and that's why their hands and feet are stained yellow i bet shari doesn't do that though i think she was probably just born with those feet with those tootsies and those yellow hands i don't think that that's urine i'm just kidding shari i was just giving you a hard time you know because like never mind so i'm i'm starting to smell it even though it's probably all in my head i do that a lot like if <laughs> if something starts to gross me out like if i start thinking about something gross i just start to smell it even if it's not there i'm sensitive it's not her it's me okay Anyway, how did I meet my husband? So the, the short story, because the long story we'll, we'll save for the podcast. Boy, there, there's a lot of tea. The short story is that I was working at a grocery store and I was really pissed to have to work there, but I couldn't find a job anywhere else. I was probably in the worst, lowest point of my life where I was like, I didn't know what I was doing with my life, where I was going. I like had started going to college, but then I stopped because I had like so many limitations. I was just in a really, really, really weird, shitty spot basically. You'll hear all about it on the podcast yet again <laughs> when we do it, which is soon. And I started working at this grocery store, super pissed. And the first day of training, I swear to God, you know how I'm a, I'm a very, I'm very much a skeptic. I don't believe in anything crazy kooky, but at the same time, how do you explain it? You know, <laughs> there's certain things. When I saw Matt for the first time, he was just kind of just the scrawny young dude. He, you know how I like my long hair dudes. At the time he had short hair, really short hair, in fact. <laughs> so it wasn't like anything in particular really caught my eye. Obviously he's a super handsome guy in general. So I guess that was probably it. But like, for some reason, as soon as I saw him, I was like, what? Oh my God, Rattle. Hi, little Rattle. I love Rattle. You know how much I love Rattle. Hey, I'm Rattle. You're Amanda from Molokai, neat. Okay, Rattle, I fucking love you so much. You stay safe up here. This is a perfect place for you, Rattle, where no one can hurt you. Stay safe up here, baby. So yeah, when I first saw him, I really swear to God, I think it was technically love at first sight. <laughs> I'm sorry, like I, I still refuse to like completely admit it, but when I first saw him, I just was like, oh my God, who is that? Where is he going? And again, he he was he's always been a super handsome guy, a super handsome face, but it wasn't like he was, notably like stuck stood out from everyone and I certainly was not at my best at that time either so we were just kind of both like very awkward in a, in a very awkward stage in our life I would say and you'll see you'll see pictures whether I post a few here or maybe like on the podcast we were both pretty awkward but when I first saw him, it was like it was almost like there was like this glowing light around him like I was just it was like pay attention this is gonna be important later you know and I was like who is that and and it was weird because he had a similar situation when he first saw me. He saw like the back of my head. He'll tell the story better. And I had like a bow in my hair because I don't know, I wanted attention, I don't know. <laughs> and he said that, you know, that caught his attention and he kind of like couldn't stop thinking about like, you know, I don't know. And so for the first few weeks, like we worked in different departments, if you can actually believe it, the most ironic thing ever, it, it, was, it was awful. It was just as awful as it sounds. I had to work in the deli with the meat and cheese, right? Exactly, my nightmare. And he worked in produce. So we were like in the same section of the store, but far away from each other. So I could like, you know, peep him stocking peppers and he could peep me cutting, cutting I was gonna say cutting cheese, but I would never, not in front of my garage. <laughs> um, cutting meat, I should say, I guess. Cut, making, making potato salad, how about that? And uh, we would, 
we both kind of would steal glances at each other. We'd never talked in our life. We had no idea who each other was. He could have been a piece of shit. He could have been a like the opposite of my type, but that didn't happen. So we kept like kind of seeing each other. Then one time he like walked by and he waved to me and I was like, wait, as if we knew each other and I waved back. It was so weird. It was like, we knew each other before we had even talked. It was so weird. Cause when he waved to me, it wasn't like awkward or weird. It was just like, oh, hey, there's that guy. And he's waving to me cause he's, he's that guy. Like he was just that guy, you know, that guy, that guy. And then finally a friend of mine that I worked with in the deli, it was so funny because like I had a raging crush on him and I didn't even know his name. I knew nothing about him again. And I was working in the deli with this guy and we were talking about music, me and this other guy, Nate, shout out to Nate. Oh, Rhonda, yo, 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 what's up, Rhonda? I'm just gonna stay over here though because I got a lot to do today. Yeah, so this, this guy, shout out to Nate. We started talking about music, me and Nate, and we realized that we both really liked metal and we had a lot of the same favorite bands and stuff. And Nate was like, you know who else loves metal and loves this kind of music? You'll you'll love him. And he, he, he goes over to the kind of music, Matt, come over here. And when he started coming, I was like, Nate, stop. No, you know how like you tell your friend not to get your crushes like attention? Like I immediately went into like embarrassed crush mode because I forgot that everyone didn't know that I had a huge crush on him. So I was like, Nate, what are you doing? Stop. And he's like, what, what? Have you not met Matt yet? Have you met Matt? Like, and I was like, oh shit. Like I have to act like I don't know. I've never even noticed him before. <laughs> And I was like, no, yeah, I've never noticed him before. <laughs> and he came over and he was just like this incredible, like he just knew everything about metal. We had all the same favorite fucking bands. It was uncanny, uncanny how much we had in common right away. And of course I, I was slick and I was like, oh yeah. Like, Cause he was naming a few bands here and there. Cause he's like, he knows so many more bands than I did. Like he was, he's just an expert and he's a musician, my fucking bag all the way. <laughs> of course, of course the guy that I like, I, I peep and I'm like, I feel super, super drawn to this person. I have no idea why. Yeah, he's cute, but like even more than the, the standard, oh, cute guy. You know, I was like super drawn to him. And then he ends up just being me, like being my absolute soulmate. And uh, and I was like, and I was like, oh yeah, can you make me like a list of, uh, of bands like to check out? That's kind of how we started talking. And it just kind of spiraled out of control from there. And I'll tell you one more thing before I, I'll, I'll cap it off. The funniest thing about the beginning of our relationship was that we found out that we lived super close to each other. Oh, hey, Tibble. How you doing, dude? He's so handsome. Okay, he's mad at me though, so I'm getting out of here. So the first time we hung out, blah, 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 I'll leave the details for another time. He drove me home and I was like, great, now he gets to see where I live, which was a, it was a thing, it was notable. But I was like, he's so cool. He'll totally understand, he'll think it's cool. And I'm sure, you know, he doesn't seem like he's like this prince, you know? I'm sure that he comes from humble beginnings too. And I lived in a camper. I lived in a actual literal camper. It wasn't a nice camper either. When I say I lived in a camper, I did not have, a shower, my toilet barely worked. I lived in a tiny ass, teeny tiny minuscule, minuscule camper in my friend's backyard because I had escaped a bad breakup. It was this whole thing with my two dogs and that's where I lived, <laughs> in the camper, um, in the woods. And uh, so I was like, yeah, this is my place. And he, he was like, this is so cool. Nice, it's like a clubhouse, this is awesome. And I was like, oh, he must be just like a humble dude. You know, he's probably, he probably lives in a humble, humble abode of his own. And he's like, I actually live like two seconds down the road. Do you want to see my house? Like just to, I, I would like, let's just like swing by really quick just to show you how close I live to you. Like it's kind of walking distance. And I was like, what? No way. So we just swung, <laughs> swung down the road to his neighborhood and Oh my God, he lived in a fucking castle. Can you believe it? He like literally he drove by and he was like, there's my house. And I was like, what is it behind the mansion, behind the castle? <laughs> great, cool, so he's rich. And for me, that wasn't a good thing because I'm like, great, like I can't land this guy. I live in a camper and he lives in a mansion. I mean, it's his parents, like it's not his, but still kind of like a little Cinderella story. He was my uptown boy, uptown boy. He's been living in a castle down the street. <laughs> I didn't even know that he was there. But yeah, it's a really cute story overall. And I will tell more of it someday. Well, cause it, it deserves a whole ass thing. Oh, I love him. What's his name again? He's like the little blueberry bear. Remember? It's not blue bear though. What is his name again? Oh, come on, I know it. Chester, something like that. No, not Chester. Poncho. He's so cute. He looks like a little blueberry. So cute. 
Oh, he's a jock though, whatever. Yeah, but no, it was a really weird situation for me and Matt. We've had, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. And like, I, I keep saying this, but I'm not just even trying to plug the podcast. There's no podcast. So I'm not trying to plug this podcast. I'm just saying it deserves a whole podcast. It's a hell of a story. And it's one that we both love telling. So we're going to devote a whole episode someday of some kind of a podcast to it. Someday soon, I think. I think it'll be soon. Yeah. And the second part to that question, I'll make it quick. Uh, he is a lot like Kyle. There's a lot of things that they don't have in common, too. For instance, Matt would never sleep on cardboard boxes. He's actually the most organized and clean, neat man I've ever met in my life, which I love because I'm a pretty, I would say I'm a disorganized person, but I'm also a clean person. It's kind of a weird dynamic. Like I'm a very clean person overall, but uh, most of my life is a mess. Like messes are what comes naturally to me. I don't know what it is, but Matt actually has diagnosed OCD. And it is the OCD where he he needs everything to be in its place and, and clean and stuff like that. Um, but he also would totally live in Kyle's house with all of the expensive equipment and technology and music stuff. I think the biggest thing is like the musician thing. And he seems just, he's kind of like that like fringe musician, guitar guy. And I don't think that there's many like of those types of musicians in Animal Crossing. So that's probably the first, who's this? Who is that again? What's his name? I know I don't like him. His name is Claude, right? That's Claude. That's gotta be Claude. It's gonna be Claude. All that I do is not enough for you. Why isn't it enough for you, Claude? Anyway, Claude is not it for me. But yeah, um, it's just, you know, the vibe I think is the biggest thing. The sarcastic, like very sweet, silly, sarcastic. That's all Kyle and that's all Matt and he's just a big softy and a music boy. And I don't know, I feel like it kind of just looks, they just look similar, you know? They're just kind of a cool metal dude. But also they have a heart of gold and they can clean up when they want to. Next question, let's see what we got here. Next question is, what is your favorite Animal Crossing game that you've played? And do you have a favorite villager that is discontinued? Carly, with the good questions. Damn, that's such a good question. Oh my gosh. Okay, what is my favorite Animal Crossing game that I've played? Gosh. Um, so I've played pretty much all of them. I actually, I've never played Pocket Camp, actually, surprisingly. And I never played, what is that one? Like oh, Happy Home Academy? Is that what that's called? No, that's, are those the people that come look at your house? What is it called? The, the designer thing? There's like a designer game or something. And then there's like Amiibo Festival and shit. Yeah, Happy Home Designer. That's what it's called. Oh, oh okay. So the original Animal Crossing and then this new Horizons, I think are the two games that I have put the most time and like love into. I did play, I played City Folk, but I think it was just in a time in my life where like it was one of those Animal Crossing situations where like I was really into it for the first few weeks, but then I like was in high school and depressed and trying to fit in or I don't remember when it came out, but it came out in like a tumultuous time for me. So I feel like I didn't get to play it as much or something. Wild World, I played a good bit and I liked it. New Leaf was great. Yeah, New Leaf was really great, but I didn't have, I didn't, I definitely did not have time for New Leaf. Either way, I feel like, I, I feel like the only two games that are really truly like so dear to my heart are that, I think it's this one. I think this one is the best. How, oh, there he is. There he is. Come on. As if I need this right now. What a killer. What a lady killer. It's Eugene. You all know how I feel about Eugene. He's so cool. He's like a different kind of cool though, you know? I thought this was a deserted island, but here we both are. I'm here on holiday soaking in the vibes. I hope we make some good memories, you know? Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's your cool guy. He ain't mine. What was I talking about before? I feel like New Leaf is awesome. Wild World is awesome for what they were at the time. Super awesome. The first one was amazing. It was revolutionary to me. It was like, I don't know, it was just like a game. Like I've always loved all types of video games, but Animal Crossing, playing that for the first time was like, wow, I can just fucking relax. I don't have to worry about shit. Like this is just a nice community. <laughs> Oh, to be honest, this game, New Horizons, has has just exceeded all my expectations. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. I I there is no shame in me telling you right now that that New Horizons knocks them all out of the park. It truly does. It really truly does. This game is incredible. 
It's everything that I've ever wanted. I, 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 yeah, I gotta go. I can't, I can't be meta on this one. I gotta just go with New Horizons. And it's changed my life. Like, I've, I've, I, this is the best. This is the best thing ever. I just, I, I've never had a better time playing Animal Crossing. I've never been so invested in an island. It's a huge part of my life. I love it. And I've never, I've never been that into it before. Like, I've always been into it, but not, you know, you know what I'm getting at? Yeah. And then let's see, a discontinued villager. Oh my god, I remember Nosegay? I liked Nosegay. Her name kind of stands out. You, I don't know, I've never heard that name. And I was always like, I kind of like it. <laughs> I like Nosegay. Oh, I liked Quetzal. Quetzal was cool because he was a Quetzalcoatl. Oh, Emerald. Do you remember Emerald? I definitely had Emerald. I liked Emerald. What the hell happened to Emerald? What did she do wrong to get the axe? Come on. Really? Emerald wasn't good enough. Okay. Interesting. Emerald didn't make the cut, but friggin' like Benjamin did. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And Sunny. Sunny's cute too. Um, who else is cute? Taru? You remember Taru the wolf? What the hell happened to him? He was so cool. He's so cute. Not Lobo. Taru. What a cutie. Yeah, they've actually taken out a lot of really cool ones. Bring back Nosegay and Taru. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Come on. Let's see, next question. My girl Albatrocities with the bang in question. What endangered species would you possibly want added as a villager or NPC in the future? What a great question. Oh my gosh, where do I start? Where do I start? Wow, oh, let's think here. How about a Sega antelope? How about a Sega antelope? How about them? Those are so cool. That would be an awesome, don't even tell me. I'm not, I don't know if I have a weapon. Oh. I can, s <laughs> he knows better. Wilbur knows better and this piece of shit knows better. I think there's gonna be a fight. <laughs> I could die. Oh my God. War Jr. is trying to be in an endangered species. War Jr., get the hell out of my face. Get the hell out of my face. Anyway, I'm War Jr. <laughs> I can't do an ugly enough voice for him. And you're Amanda from Molokai. None of your business, War Jr. How the hell, Get wash your mouth out with soap. Get my name out of your fucking mouth. Get my name out of this man's mouth. I wasn't expecting a meet and greet on this tour, but then again, I ain't sure what I expect. I don't care. I don't care what you expect. I don't care. I don't want to hear another damn word. I wish I could take this ladder and bash him over the head with it. The last thing on earth I needed to see were Junior rot in hell. <laughs> rot in hell. I hope he never gets down. I hope he I hope he stays up there forever and dries out in the sun. And I mean that. He's a bad person. I'm sorry. I love frogs. I love toads. Wilbur, you know better. You know better. That's my enemy and my stalker. And he threatens my life on a daily basis. And I think that I could honestly sue you for putting my life at risk. I won't because I love you. Don't let it happen again, though, okay? Don't let it happen again. If I see Ward Jr. again, if I see Ward Jr. again, y'all are going to be sorry. I'm, I don't want to have to turn into like Mega Karen, but I'll do that if I have to. Back to beautiful animals that I love. Let's see. Um, Sega antelope would be cool. How about a beautiful bat? There's so many different bats to choose from that are endangered. How about a, what else do we got here? I'd love to see more turtles, you know? It'd be cool to have like a leatherback sea turtle, uh, NPC. Leatherback sea turtles are my favorite turtle in the world. Oh my God, they're so incredible. The leatherback sea turtle, are y'all aware of how incredible this animal is? Uh, just like a quick, just a quick, uh, like, you know, the back of a baseball card. Quick stats for you. So the leatherback sea turtle, largest, largest turtle in the world, one of the largest reptiles, right up there with the saltwater croc. They can be 2,000 pounds, seven feet long, seven feet wide. They're the only existing member of the family Dermocelles. Ugh, Sylvia, come on. Whatever. I'm done with Sylvia. Is that her name, Sylvia? Or like, yeah, that's gotta be Sylvia, right? Is Sylvia the purple one? I don't really care, to be honest. Anyway, okay, they, they don't have a shell, basically. They do not have a shell. Other sea turtles do, they do not. They just have like this kind of just bony, leathery 
rigid back that makes them super hydrodynamic and they are the fastest turtle in the world. They can go pretty fast in the ocean, especially for a turtle, they're very strong. They can travel 10,000 miles in a year. They have just a super wide range. They're mariners of the ocean. They're constantly traveling and they're so big that, I don't know, like, so you've probably heard that reptiles are cold blooded, but they don't actually have cold blood. It, it's, it refers to the fact that they are ectothermic, which means that they're unable to regulate their internal body temperature physically. They have to rely on outside sources of heat in order to warm their internal body temperature up. So we're endothermic, we're warm blooded, but that doesn't mean that our blood is always gonna be warm. That means that our bodies are a warm place because it's they're capable, our muscles are capable of uh, using the energy and the electricity in our muscles to warm our bodies. And so even if we're outside and we're cold and it's negative four degrees outside, you know, most of the time, if we haven't been out there for hours and hours and hours, you take our temperature and it's still gonna be, you know, 96 degrees. We're pretty hot. Even when we're in our house and it's like 70 degrees in our house, we're still gonna be in the 90s because we are constantly warming our bodies. Margie, Margie, and this time I've seen the Animal Crossing movie, so I love Margie and appreciate her 10,000 times more. Margie, what's up Margie? I know you, I know your story now, I get you now. Literally my favorite character in the Animal Crossing movie. Margie's an inspiration. Margie, thank you so much, you keep me going. You keep me going, you honestly do, you inspire me. Anyway, so reptiles are cold-blooded, meaning that they that's why they bask. That's why you always see turtles on the logs, that's why you always see snakes and lizards out in the hot sun like on the pavement is because they need to soak up UVB rays that's why when you um, keep reptiles as pets a lot of them need like a heat lamp and if they don't need a heat lamp maybe they need a heat pad because they have they have to thermoregulate manually whereas our bodies will automatically thermoregulate if if that makes sense so they're cold-blooded creatures. However, the leatherback sea turtle is, is an anomaly because even though there's other reptiles that are also really, really big, like the Komodo dragon, saltwater crocodile, the leatherback has this really, really thick, almost like a blubber layer that helps insulate them. So they are capable of something called countercurrent heat exchange, which it essentially traps heat that their muscles make in their body. And while it isn't the, the same type of thermoregulation that endothermic creatures like us and other mammals use, they can stay warm, unlike other reptiles. And so they can travel all the way up into Arctic waters that no other sea turtle could even dare to dream to go into without freezing. In fact, when I worked with sea turtles for a few years, there would be a sea turtle season in Massachusetts where they would all strand on the beaches, not all of them, but there would be a ton of them that would get stuck in the hook of Cape Cod. They would get pushed up by the Gulf Stream. They would eat all the jellyfish because there's a lot more jellyfish in cold water than there is in warm water. And so, who's here? Who's here? Who is it? Come on, don't do, who is here? You're freaking me out. Who is here? It, do they have a knife? Is it, oh God, ah! <sighs> Why did he have to hide like that? <sighs> That's scary. <sighs> It was, not only was it Harry, but he, Harry's a hippo and he has a dirty mustache. God, that was so close. It was so scary. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Wilbur, come on. I don't want to go through this again with you. Uh, be careful. Be better, Wilbur. Anyway, so there's several different species of sea turtles that come up north every year, chasing the jellyfish blooms and just on their little journey. There's the Kemp's Ridleys, the loggerheads, the green sea turtles, and the leatherbacks. And the loggerheads, the Kemp's Ridleys, and the greens are the ones that, that wash up on the shore. They get too cold to swim. The currents take them to shore. They wash up, and then they have to get rushed to the sea turtle hospital to recover and to slowly warm up and to just be nursed back to health. A lot of them get pneumonia and uh, hypothermia, but the leatherbacks, they never, ever, ever wash up. They never cold stun because they are able to keep themselves warm. They're able to go up to the Arctic, up to Nova Scotia, and eat all the cold water jellies up there. They're incredible. They can also hold their breath for four hours and they can dive 
like 4,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. They're a powerhouse. In the first year of their life, they're, they're born and they're no bigger than a can of soda. And then they, uh, they can gain up to 500 pounds in the first year of their life. And they do all of this on a diet of only jellyfish. That's all they eat. Jellyfish have like zero nutritional value whatsoever. But e if you eat enough of them, you get all the little plankton and stuff that the jellyfish ate. And that's where they get their nutrients. Ugh, why is this so scary? God, it's Flip. And we all know how I feel about Flip. Ah! Yeah, Flip's cursed. We all know. Why is this scary? I guess it's because it's the scary season, because it's almost Halloween. So they want to give me a little bit of a fright. I can buy into it, that's fun. But anyway, leatherback sea turtles are incredible. But unfortunately, here's the catch. So they eat only jellyfish because it takes a lot of energy to do stuff, you know? Animals, us, as well as wild animals, you know, when you go into zoology or biology, you learn all about how it is out there surviving and, and everything is about energy. It's like a currency, you know, you gotta, you gotta, animals out in the wild, they are designed, their instincts and everything, it comes into play designed to budget their energy the most effectively because they need, they're always gonna need enough energy to hunt, graze, find food. That takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of energy to breathe, takes a lot of energy to migrate. So they have to have kind of like an energy budget. And so energy, they, they pinch pennies when it comes to energy. They want to save as much energy as possible. And so the leatherback sea turtle is able to do all of these incredible, incredible things and expend tons of energy because their digestive system is super, super, super simplistic. And Surprisingly enough, most people don't like sit and think about how much energy it takes us just to exist. Like you you burn a good like 2000 calories a day even if you just do nothing. If you just sit around all day, you could still burn a lot of calories because your body is working. Your digestive system notably is is working super super hard. It's like a big machine. So the digestive system is one of the most energy draining systems in the body and since the leatherback is able to simplify that system. Oh my god. God, it's Jake Paul. This is this is a joke. Come on. Just one dud after the other. There's Jake Paul, Quilson. Doesn't that look just like Jake Paul? Hey, Jake Paul, why'd you get raided by the FBI? Why don't you spill? Okay, anyway, yeah. He's, he's a shithead. So anyway, long story short, they have this super simplistic digestive system because jellyfish are made of 90% water. So it's super easy to digest them. They basically, they save so much energy just kind of passing these jellyfish right through. They just absorb all of the plankton. Anything that the jellyfish might've eaten is that is the nutrients that they get. And these guys eat tons of jellyfish. I'm talking hundreds of pounds. And that's how they do their thing. And so they've, they've been around for 300 million years doing this and Plastic bags are a relatively new thing, so they don't know what they are. Their instincts are not prepared to be able to tell the difference between a jellyfish and a plastic bag. And their digestive system, remember, is very simple. And so there are lots of types of sea turtles that do have a stronger digestive system because they're not out there doing these amazing things that the leatherback is doing. So say like a green sea turtle or a, like a hawksbill that eats really hard, like sponges and stuff like that. The, those guys might be able to pass plastic or a balloon. A lot of the time it does, it does end up hurting them, but they, they might have a chance at surviving. A leatherback though, whose main and only food source is jellyfish, so they're most likely to eat a plastic bag accidentally, they, they're not gonna survive, period. They just cannot digest it. They will die of an impaction every time. And it's so sad. So that's a huge threat to them. So, are you kidding me? My enemy, Rocco, what is, is this a joke? <sighs> maybe, maybe I was wrong about the whole manifesting. Maybe I was wrong. Come on, what is going on? Rocco, the, the hippo, the murderous crunchy hippo, yikes. Anyway, long. I hope that you don't mind that I'm just going off on the leather back thing, but I love them. They're like my, one of my favorite, top 10 favorite animals ever. And I would love to see one as like an NPC. Wouldn't that be cute? Like a like a cool like, like ocean guy. We already have so many ocean character, ocean like related characters, but I just think they're amazing. And that was my, that was kind of like, you know, my little thing on like, hey, try to use reusable bags whenever you can. Plastic bags are shit. Plastic is the worst. Let's all try to use less plastic. Thanks. How about a Komodo dragon? Where's the Komodo dragons? The Komodo dragon villagers? Can you imagine? How cool would that be? Oh my God, that would be so cool. I love bats too. Like I said before, I already said that. Do you guys know I like bats? I, I bring that up randomly all the time because I love bats. What can I say? I have this song that I sing all the time randomly. I guess I'll sing it for you. 
Um, it goes bats, 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 bats. I don't want to see cats. I don't want to see rats. I just want to see bats, 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 and it just keeps going like that. But I do, I do want to see cats and rats. I love cats, rats, and bats. But that's just my bats song. Oh my God, Lopez. Okay, so we're. It's not. It's not completely like shit after shit after shit. So the streak is broken. Hi, Lopez. Lopez is so cute. I'm a deer about town. I think you're actually an antelope, but okay. Same thing, right? We should probably stick together, huh? I love the smug villagers. They're so cute. They're always flirting. Lopez, I'm sorry I'm taken. But honestly, if I wasn't, nah. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, another hitter from Carly. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? That's such a great... If I could live, yeah. If I could live anywhere in the world. That's such a great question. Um, It's a great question because I have a good answer. And honestly, I'm actually pretty happy with where we live. Like not my apartment. I would love to have like a house. I think that would be ideal. But I've thought about it. Like there's really no, there's no other, like, you know, Georgia, uh, it's tough because I'm from the North. So it's tough with the, um, it's tough living in the Bible belt. Let's say that. If, as someone who didn't grow up with that culture, if you want to call it that, it's tough living in the Bible belt. It's definitely a culture shock. However, Atlanta is 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 just totally, it's it's hard to believe you're in Georgia sometimes. And Georgia's a beautiful state. The state itself, beautiful place. Lots of animals. I love the I love the environment here. I love Atlanta. I really truly love Atlanta. It's just full of people from all over. Atlanta is really a melting pot. It grew really fast with all these businesses, the movie industry, and there's just tons of people from all over the world here. So it's not really like that backwoodsy type Georgia that you think about. And honestly, like this metro area that me and my husband live in currently is wonderful. And I actually really love it here. And I've thought about it before. I'm like, you know what? I wanna like live in California or like Colorado and all these like amazing places. And I'm kind of just like, no, honestly, I like it here. I really do. Even if I had all the money in the world, I think I would just move to one of these like towns that we can't afford a house in, but that we love that are around us. And we would just live there. And my thing is like, oh my God, no, it's Kiki. I love Kiki so much. I just want to gaze at her really quick. I love her. Hi, Kiki. Hi, Kiki. I love her so much. Can you just look at me? She's too good for me. There she is. What a pretty girl. I love you, Kiki. It's your season. The season of, of Kiki. Kiki's time. Take good care of Kiki if you have her. Make sure she's gets, she gets a spooky outfit and lots of candy. Okay, so my thing is like, it's just, it's tough living in this uh, type of place when you when you don't share a lot of the beliefs as most of the state. However, I, I believe that it's important for people like me and my husband to live here. If you want to change it, then you stay and change it. You know what I mean? And that's why it's like when people say like, if you don't like America, you can get out. And it's like, no, if you don't like the way that your country is now but you you love your country you you'll stay and you'll work and you'll fight to change and, and make it better hey just want to add to this little rant that i'm speaking from a place of privilege and if your life and your rights are being infringed on you have every right to leave i'm speaking as someone who is using my privilege to stay and fight for the rights of people who don't have the privilege to get up and leave because of monetary issues and anyway just want to let you know i'm not shaming anyone who leaves a place because oh my gosh they made my whole entire life illegal totally get that just wanted to throw this in there so that no one feels like they're being called out i'm here for you i'm fighting for you and i want better for you and so that's how i feel about georgia i love georgia i think it's a beautiful place i don't want to go anywhere else even though it's not perfect and it can be disheartening sometimes like when i go down south to study animals. I'm just not used to that type of world down there and it is definitely full of people that I strongly disagree with. You know, I, I just, yeah, I love this place and I think it needs more people like us here. So I'm staying. All right. Oh, this is another great question by Carly. I actually love this question. Did you have any pets growing up? If so, what were they and what were their names? I, I didn't get my first pet until I think I was like six. Oh, Octavian. Hi, Octavian. Hey, buddy. Gotta love Octavian, hi. Can you just come out and see everybody? Wow, you're so grumpy. There's Octavian. He didn't want to come out and see you, but I but I made him. You're very handsome, even though you think you're not. He's he's very insecure. But we love you, Octavian. So yeah, I've always, always, always been obsessed with animals. Always, for as long as I can remember, which is kind of funny, because like both my, my parents like animals. 
My mom, more than my dad. My dad was always kind of that guy that didn't really want pets. He didn't like dogs, hates cats, just wasn't really an animal person. And my mom, she liked animals. She liked animals a lot. She loves animals, but she's not like, she wasn't like, I need to have animals and pets. Like I can't imagine living without, I just can't imagine not having pets. And when I was little, I was just like, where the hell are our pets? Why the hell don't we have pets? This is an outrage. This is so weird. I felt so wrong. Like that's the type of stuff that makes me believe in friggin' past lives where I was just like, why am I living my life without pets? Even though I never had them, I was just like, this is so backwards. So we had some fish tanks and stuff and I always loved all of our fish. I gave each and every single one of them names and I really could tell every single one of them apart. My first ever pet besides fish was a bunny. My cousins, we actually lived in a duplex. Me and my family lived on one side and then my aunt and our cousins lived on another side, which was really fun because we just like had a door and we just go play with our cousins whenever. And they had pets. They got to have pets. I didn't. They had bunnies and their bunnies had babies. And so when the bunnies had babies, I was over there and I just loved those baby bunnies. I was like every single day was there taking care of them, naming every single baby. I just loved them so much. And there was one baby in particular that I fell in love with. He was a white bunny. He was like a little lop like a Holland Lop or something like that. He was white with gray ears and I named him Frosty and I loved him. He was my favorite of the babies. And so finally my parents got some sense. I think that is Amelia, the bad bitch, the poker playing bad Vegas bitch. There she is, Amelia. How do you do it? How do you do it? Every single day? Really? You've done it again. Constantly raising the bar for all of us and doing it flawlessly. I'd say I'm surprised, but I know who you are. You're Amelia, and we love you. She's incredible. Look at the side eye. She's just like, <laughs> and you are? I'm like, exactly. I'm, I'm a peasant. That's who I am. I don't want to I don't want to take any space in your brain. You don't need to know my name. I'm not important. You are. Anyway, so I had this like bunny that I loved, Frosty. He was my favorite. I think there were like three or four babies and Frosty was my favorite and I just totally bonded with this bunny. It kind of was like a movie because the bunny was, he was a really special little bunny. Like I really, I just loved him so much that I made him into this like very affectionate rabbit who loved to be held. He would follow me around. He played hide and seek with me. My parents let me keep him because they would have been heartless if they hadn't. I just loved this rabbit. I didn't, I don't even think I really, really asked. I think that they just were nice and let me keep him. And he was amazing. I had him for seven years. And then, so I had Frosty and that was like our only pet. And then, but I wanted a dog. I wanted a dog so bad. I think a lot of kids can relate to that time in your life where you're just working your parents to get that dog. That's like all you can think about is the dog, the dog, the dog. When am I going to get my dog? All I could think about was my dog. I needed a dog. I would always have all these like fake dogs in my head. I just would make up these dogs in my head. Oh God, who's this? What is his name again? Who's this? Teddy? Is it his name? Is it Teddy? I'm good. With it. I'm good, Teddy. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks though. So I wanted a dog so bad and my parents, I don't know, it was weird. My dad didn't really like dogs because he got attacked by a dog when he was younger. And my mom loved dogs. She wanted a poodle, but my mom, my dad would like never let her get a poodle because my dad was didn't want a poodle, I guess. And he was like, we can get a dog if it's a German Shepherd because I love German Shepherds. German Shepherds are my favorite. And, uh, but we were poor, broke. So we couldn't like afford a German Shepherd and we wanted to rescue one, but we could never find one at a rescue. And finally one day, I think I was, I, I guess I was like seven or eight and we had just moved into a new house so I guess that was probably the reason why like we lived in the duplex and then we moved into a house and my dad's cousin's wife's sister <laughs> literally sounds made up but it's not yeah my dad's cousin's wife's sister I think it was we were like at a cookout she was there she's like oh yeah my dog just had puppies and I guess her dog was a like purebred Australian shepherd <laughs> They didn't like fix them, which I mean, thanks for my dog, but also fix your dog, please. Hi, is that Lionel? Is that his name, Lionel? Lionel, right? What's his name? Leopold. Is this Leopold or Lionel? Lionel, an old king. Okay, Lionel, good for you. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I guess her dog got out and met up with a purebred German Shepherd and she had puppies and they were part Australian Shepherd, part German Shepherd. But uh, there was a lot of them that looked just like just German Shepherd. So she was showing my parents pictures and she was like, I'll give you them for free. And they thought about it for like the weekend and then they were like, okay, fine, we'll get a dog. And we got a dog and he was, his name was Buddy and he was really an amazing first dog. Like just the perfect dog, you know, just a perfect, perfect dog. He just was not a problem ever. He was the perfect bestest, bestest dog you could ever ask for. And he lived to be 12 and then he got cancer 
and he had to get put down. It was like so, so devastating, beyond devastating. Like just like the, the one of the like closest losses because I, I've been lucky in my life that I haven't had haven't experienced too much grief and loss but definitely losing him was like is just like losing any other ma member of the family same with frosty my rabbit when he died i actually held frosty while he died he literally died in my arms my parents came up to my room and got me this is like seven years after i got him so i guess i was like 14. my parents had to get me out of my room oh my gosh who's that rhonda hey rhonda bye rhonda they're like oh my gosh something's wrong with frosty he's having like a seizure and I had to go down to his like little hutch and he was like laying there, but he was still alive. And they, we were, you know, gonna get him to the vet. But I just knew, I was like, no, I don't think he's gonna make it to the vet. I did. I don't think I said anything. I just like pulled him into my lap and like held him and he just looked at me. And I just, I knew at that moment I had to tell him that I loved him and like just kiss him and hug him and hold him. And he died in my lap. It was really fucked up. <laughs> but they were two amazing, perfect, perfect, perfect first pets. They really were two good boys. And I, now I have more good boys and girls. I've just been so lucky with my pets. I have the best pets. So yeah, I'm glad you asked. I like talking about them. Stortita, I hope I'm saying that right, asked, how did your passion for the environment start? Great question. So I alluded to it in the last question, but I basically was born just obsessed with animals. Like I really don't even remember exactly where that started. I've just always loved animals. But my, like, my real, my real, oh. Hold on, I need a moment. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> okay, let's go sit down <laughs> over here. Okay, so we're here, we're, we're out here looking for Anka, obviously. And I, I explicitly said that there's no villager that's going to sway me. I didn't even mention Zucker, though. And I should have, I really should have. This is the reason he's here right now. Zucker, can you, you can't even look at me? There you are. Yes, I see you, my Lord. Thank you for coming to me. I know exactly why you're here. I know it's not time yet. You know it's not time yet. I think we both know that it's not time yet. So what is my lesson, master? What is the lesson that you want to teach me today, master? What is it? Over the fire, this is like Power Rangers, the Power Rangers movie. This is invoking the Power Rangers movie. Remember when they go to the island? The first one, the Mighty Morphin? They go to the island and that lady like teaches them how to be like dinosaurs <laughs> or something. Yeah, he's teaching me something. He's he's transferring it, information. <laughs> yeah, he's teaching me about life. We become the grass, like, the antelopes eat the grass. This is incredible. Thank you, Zucker. What should I do about Sherb? What do I do about Sherb? He's telling me just to take my take my time, keep my people safe, lead my people out of the darkness. Thank you, Zucker. Y'all know how much I love Zucker and how much I want him. I can't even believe this is happening. Trying to stay calm because he's he's giving me the strength. Thank you, Zucker. Thank you, Master. Thank you for sending me the strength. I know that you know that we're in we're in a weird spot right now. We're we're facing a threat that none of us really know the extent of quite yet. But I think I think we can all handle it. If anything, I think we can lead the boy out of the darkness. I hope we can. And I know that when the time is right, you will come to, home to us. Just like the butterfly landed on the flower. He's he's probably saying stuff like that. Like, do you see the butterfly as it lands on the flower? Just at the right time. If he landed on it too soon, it might have he might have fallen. I don't know. You know, it's stuff like that. He's talking like that. Just imagine that we're both talking like Simba and Mufasa on the rock. And I know that Zucker is gonna come to me at the right time. Hey, nice to meet ya. I'm Zucker. I'm a all-knowing benevolent alien who's visiting this island for a specific reason to talk to you to send you strength and to teach you a new defensive power move <laughs> and then he teaches me how to like throw lightning or something yeah and then he says bloop because that's something that the benevolent wise ancient alien would say thank you zucker i know that you built the pyramids zucker built stonehenge zucker just transferred into my brain like the giver um, the memories of him building the pyramids building stonehenge and building the easter island heads thank you zucker thank you for all you do and the nazca lines he did that too that's him that was him and his people thank you zucker for making our world beautiful and interesting and unique we're still trying to figure out all that shit the, the nazca lines and shit we're still trying to figure it out and crop circles too that was you very cool, Zucker. This breaks my heart. This breaks my heart, but I think it's a good sign. I think it's a good sign. I think we're on the way. And I think that it shows all the growth, all the growth of, 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 my, of me, of me. You know, because I, when I would see Zucker before, I would cry. I would break down. But now I, I am truly 
grateful. My wisdom grows immeasurably every single time I'm in his presence. Ugh, always loved animals, right? Is that what we're talking about? Yes, always loved animals. But my passion for the environment, there's a very specific moment that I will never forget that literally changed my entire life and made me the person I am today. I'll never forget it. Every single detail is still as fresh as it was if it had just happened. So my dad, would go with his work on a deep sea fishing trip every year. And he knew that I loved animals, but I had never, ever, ever been on the ocean. We'd never been on a whale watch before, nothing like that. And he was like, and I think there was like this one year that people were taking their kids. So he's like, oh, Amanda would love this. She loves going out in nature. We would always go camping as a little kid, um, stuff like that. We were just very outdoorsy family. So he was like, you know, Amanda would love this. She's, cause I've always had that patience to just do stuff like that, like be on a boat for, for freaking seven hours. Whereas my, my brother who's two years younger than me probably would have never survived. So he took me on this trip out to the ocean. Cause he thought like, you know, I would love horns be every time horns be how many times do I have to tell you get a life. Go join another community. Are you seriously this much of a hermit? This much of an outcast? Somebody adopt Hornsby. I think somebody needs to come and adopt this child. You know what, Hornsby? Do you need anything? Do I, I think I have some crackers in my bag. Do you need any snacks? Do you need a Capri Sun? I might have an extra. Pretend I threw him like a, a little pack of snacks. Okay, that happened. Anyway, so he's like, you know, we gotta get you out on the ocean. I think you would love it. Cause I've never really like, you know, we've been to the beach, but obviously that's not like an ocean experience per se. Um, so I thought I knew what to expect. I had no idea. Wow, what if, it just like, if you have a good day on the ocean, it'll change your life. It's, it's funny cause as somebody who went on to work on the ocean, Sometimes you have a good day, you get lucky, you see some incredible shit, and then other days you'll be out there 10 hours and see zip, nothing. So my dad took me out to the ocean, and wow. Uh, we first started, you know, obviously like I don't, I was that kid, I was like, put it back with the fish, but it was mostly just seeing wildlife for me, which was great. So we saw whales, of course seeing whales was incredible and awe-inspiring. Bunch of humpback whales and fin whales, but they were far away, you know, they were they were out there in the distance and it was just kind of like, wow, incredible spectacle. Lots of really cool fish that were being caught, they kept catching all of these spiny dogfish shark. And I'll never forget, this is one thing that really has stuck with me, that these spiny dogfish, they were everywhere. Everywhere. And I remember the, the the people who worked in the boat saying, yeah, they're like, they, you know, they're coming out your eyeballs, they're everywhere. There's just so many, because I was like, why do people keep catching these baby sharks? And he was like, oh, they're not baby sharks. They're just a small species of shark and nobody can eat them or anything. So we just always throw them back. And I was like, good. You know, I was like, wow, like sharks are actually really cute up close. They're not as scary. Oh, there's Flora. Hi, Flora. Pretty girl. I love Flora. As far as birds go, she's one of the best. A flamingo. Let me know how your flora's doing if you have her. She's so cute. Anyway, I like got to see these little sharks up close and be like, oh wow, sharks are actually really cool and fascinating and cute. Cause unless you know a lot about sharks to begin with, or you like sharks to begin with, a lot of people are just, you know, they just think that sharks are horrible, scary creatures. I was like, oh my God, they're really cute. And I'll never forget like hearing everybody talk about how numerous and how annoying these little dogfish sharks are. And now they're endangered. <laughs> that species. So that alone tells you everything you need to know. Like, it's crazy. Because they were literally, every single catch was one of these spiny dogfish. And now they're doing really badly. But anyway, at the time I didn't know that. What really, really rocked my world was, you know, all of a sudden we're just all kind of looking out in the water and the captain like comes over the loudspeaker on the boat and they never usually did that. And they were like, there's like this amazing, amazing thing. Everybody get to, you know, this side of the boat, look over here. And I look over and there's this massive, massive fin, like jaws, cutting through the water slowly, massive. And I, I look over the boat and I see that this shark is a shark, fucking jaws. At my, my, like, you know, if you, you pictured the jaws fin cutting through the water, huge. This shark was 20 feet long. And I was like, oh my God. And he was right near the boat, really, really close to the boat. And I couldn't even process what I was seeing. This shark had its mouth wide open. The biggest mouth I've ever seen in my life. So much so that the nose of this shark, big, round, stupid, adorable nose, was actually out of the water. And then the tip of his tail was out of the water. He was at the very surface of the water. I had no idea what I was seeing. I was like, is this a shark? What is up with this shark? Oh, is that Groucho? I like Groucho. Hi, Groucho. Hello, Groucho. 
Um, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. I was like, what is this? What is this? So the, the captain of the ship went on to say that it was a basking shark, the second largest species of shark in the world, and that this shark, this massive behemoth, this fucking leviathan that I was seeing, that I was like, this shark's gonna eat the whole ship. We're, we're doomed. We need a bigger boat. We needed a bigger boat yesterday. We're all fucked. He goes on to say that this shark is a, is a filter feeder, a gentle giant, and he's eating plankton. He's got his mouth wide open because he's skimming the top of the water for all the plankton. And then he's as harmless as could be. He said, you could jump in the water right now if you wanted to, and you would have nothing to worry about. You could pet the shark. You could swim alongside it, and it wouldn't even notice you. It's a gentle giant. And when I heard that, I hadn't. I just didn't know that animals could be so diverse and so, like, they could surprise you so much. There was so much to know about animals that I had gone, like, oh, like eight years, nine years of my life, however old I was. I might have been eight or nine. I went, like, a whole nine years of my life without knowing that there was this gigantic shark that was so gentle that ate plankton, and his esophagus was only as big as a grapefruit. So even if he said you could stand up in the shark's mouth, but he would ne- he could never swallow you because his esophagus is too small. He wouldn't want to anyway. He said this is one of the most gentle creatures in the ocean. They just they're so slow. They mosey along, and that I just couldn't even. It just it's a moment that will always stick in my mind. It was the moment that I I just felt everything coming together. I was like this is there's nothing better than this. There's never ever going to be anything better than this than seeing this be- beautiful nature like this like miracle like learning something new, seeing something that you could have never even dreamed would be real. <laughs> and just watching this beautiful shark and it was so close. Like the boat was small and the shark was so big. Like there was it's like in a like dramatic movie where there's like just like shit happening. Your brain is like rewiring itself. Like my entire brain rewired itself. My entire soul kind of like finished taking its shape. And I was like, this is totally it. Oh God, Salil. Hi, Salil. You still still the same old bitch. Okay, I see how it is. Same. So uh, thanks for the comic relief, Salila. So yeah, no, I just, I'll never forget how I felt in that moment. It was just like everything changed. And I, t- I took this picture with um, a disposable camera of the shark. And it was just like the fin, you know, and the picture gets developed at friggin' CVS. And it's the stupidest, pe- it's just like, you can see there's like this murky, very, it's thick with plankton. It's green Massachusetts friggin' Cape Cod water and this fin, and it looks so much smaller than it was in that moment, because it's just the weird perception. And it was like the shittiest picture ever. If somebody had picked it up, they wouldn't have known what it was, but that picture was, it was priceless to me. It was worth more than, than all the money in the world to me. And I carried it around with me, I brought it to school with me, I just, I don't know, there's just, I just like, I could really go back there about just looking at that picture. I can always go back to that moment. And it was just like it had happened yesterday. And I just wanted it. I wanted everything all at once. I wanted to, to just make it my life. Like, I remember, like, I wanted to find, like, a program to adopt a basking shark. And, like, symbolically. And the only one that they had, because it's such a random shark that not a lot of people know about or care about. And they're, they're not very cute. They're actually kind of scary looking and ugly. As a lot of people, I don't think they're ugly. I think they're adorable. But a lot of people think they're ugly and scary. So people don't want to symbolically adopt them for their aunt or anything. And so there was like this one program, but it was like in Scotland and my parents couldn't figure out how to pay for it. And I tried to start a basking shark club at my school that didn't obviously get off the ground. And I like tried to, the first ever, you know how like when you're little and you learned how to like make a website, I made like a basking shark website. Who's this? Oh my God, it's the, it's the boy. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Yes, there is someone on this island. It's you. It's you, the phantom, to lead us in the summer. Yep, this is Wade. He's the boy. He's the boy who's going to lead us out of the darkness. You, you know, notice how I see Zucker, and then I see Wade? Yeah, it's because I needed to. I needed to convene with both of them. Just to let them know, hey, I'm still keeping Sherb at bay, but just know that at a moment's notice, I may need to call you in. Wade, I love you. I love you, Wade. When you get big, you're going to save us all. Anyway, 
yeah, I tried to make a basking shark website. I was just so obsessed with them. And of course, loving basking sharks led me to love sharks and then the ocean. And then I was just, it's, it was over from there. I just loved everything, not just ocean, but like all animals, you know, just like, the, and just nature. I was like, God, this incredible wildlife moment happened to me. And it just, it made me realize how incredible these types of moments can be. And I've never, I had so many since then, but that was the first one I ever had of like a magical wildlife nature moment. That's the best thing about that stuff is that there's no controlling it. You can't control it. You can't contrive it. You know, you can't make that shit happen. You know, you can, you can go to Six Flags and have an awesome time riding this amazing roller coaster. You can pay all this money and go see the Great Wall of China or go see the pyramids or go see, you know, you could control that stuff. You can, you know that when you buy your tickets to Cairo, you're going to go and you're going to get to see those, those friggin' pyramids and, and friggin' King Tut's feet at the tomb because they're showing his feet and his head I guess now which is weird but whatever you know that like if you pay for the tickets you can go and see the Lord of the Rings friggin place that they filmed it in New Zealand like that stuff's there you know where it is you can go to it at any time but with wildlife it's a totally different story you are not in control and if you see a miracle like it's really something that some people they go they search for it for their lifetime other people they get to see it happen right before their very eyes and it just happens for them and it just all falls together. And there's been several moments in my life that have been like that and it's, there's, it's nothing short of magic. It's, it's the closest thing we have to seeing a fucking miracle, seeing somebody walk on water. It really is incredible when you see an amazing moment in wildlife and you feel so lucky. You feel like, you feel like the, the stars are aligned and like, God, like, some like this is just magic that I'm witnessing and you don't, don't even know why you were chosen or why these animals decided to do this incredible thing in front of you or show because basking sharks are super rare people do not see them often as somebody who ended up going into an internship where you're looking for them and you're out there looking for them they're not easy to find so that was a totally random thing Egbert not easy to find a totally random thing just kidding hi Egbert I wish you'd get some sleep buddy I hate seeing you like this get some sleep Okay, why don't you talk to your doctor? You might need to take some medication. Insomnia is very, I have insomnia and it's not easy. I hope he's doing okay. He always looks so sad and forlorn. Let me know if you're taking care of Egbert and if he's found happiness on your island, please. Thank you. But anyway, I just, I love nature. I love animals. And yeah, seeing, having a moment like that where you're like, wow, like, I didn't ask for this to happen. I didn't try, I didn't come out here thinking that this would happen. It was just kind of whatever happens, happens. And when that stuff happens, you feel you feel like you were chosen by the universe to see it, to witness it. And you feel so lucky and you feel like I, I'm, I could only be so lucky if this would happen again. And of all the times I've ever been out in nature, in the wild, looking for this stuff, it still does happen very rarely. Yeah, you'll see animals, that'd be cool. You might see a whale go up like, you whales when they when they move sometimes their their backs skim the water you see these whales you're like oh look and then their tails come up and when I worked on the ocean we would uh, be looking for humpback whales and every humpback whale has their own unique tail pattern fluke pattern that's what their tail is called and you could actually tell which whale it was and they all had names so we would have to write down all their behaviors and most of the time you just see the whales swimming they were just swimming they'd be feeding but every once in a while you'd see a whale they just were feeling themselves that day and they put on uh, the most incredible show. They're breaching, they're spinning in the air, this fucking thousands upon thousands of pounds of animal, this amazing, intelligent, brilliant, beautiful mammal that is bigger than your eye can even take in at once. And it's throwing all several thousand pounds of itself out of the water for you to, to witness that entire animal out of the water, out of the water. I actually got to see, when I was older, it was like the perfect full circle moment. I got to see a basking shark breach, which is a very rare thing. Basking sharks actually sometimes will breach out of the water. Some people think it's to expel like remoras that are bothering them or little parasites or something. But either way, I saw, I was like, oh, I wanna see a basking shark again. And it's very rare to see them breach. And one day I was like, oh, is that a whale? Who's that? Who's that over there jumping? And it was a fucking basking shark. And I saw the whole thing and it's just like, what? Oh God, speaking of what? It's Violet, yikes, she's gonna kill me. Yeah, I gotta get out of here, she scares me, she scares me. What is up with her, why did they do her like that? So scary. Basking sharks though, not scary, but yeah, it's just an incredible thing. Like every once in a while you just get lucky, you get to see something incredible and amazing. But that's the thing with nature that makes it so unique is that there's no control, you can't, you can't there's no amount of money 
that you can pay to be assured that you can go out on a whale. You can pay for a whale watch ticket, but sometimes you go out on a whale watch and you see nothing. And you see nothing. You see maybe one or two quick little fins come up and down. You might see a fluke. And then sometimes you pay for a whale watch. It's your first one ever. You're from the country. You've never been on a whale watch in your life. You're not even that interested. You just wanted to try it. And you see this amazing spectacle. You see sharks. You see whales. You see this, like all these whales jumping out of the water. You just like you could see a miracle. But it's it's totally random chance. It doesn't happen often. And when it does, you almost feel like the universe is like smiling down on you and is like chose you for whatever reason. And it's a really amazing feeling that I'll never get sick of ever. That's a great question. And you know, I love like ranting about that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. Ooh, okay. Top five favorite bands. Arch Fiend. Oh God, top five favorite bands. How am I even gonna, I think they constantly change. <laughs> I really do. Uh, oh God. And I, my music taste is so crazy. It's almost like I gotta do like my top, oh gosh. My probably my first favorite band, but then again, they're all kind of the same. Who is this? What's his name again? I always, always forget his name. What is his name? Dylan? <laughs> There's no villager named Dylan. What is his name? Zach, what the hell is his name? Frank, same thing. What's up, Frank? He's pretty cool, I guess. I guess, you know, yeah. Okay, Frank, you're just another eagle. Top five favorite, okay, so my first favorite band, but I think all my favorite bands are kind of just my favorite bands. There's like, there's some days where one's my favorite, some days where another's my favorite. Uh, Rush, I guess, has to be on that, is the first top of that list, the band Rush, just because every single thing they've ever done is brilliant and perfect. Uh, they're an older band, late 60s, early 70s, and they just kept going and going and going until just a few years ago. And the drummer of the band, Neil Peart, who's one of just my biggest inspirations in every facet of life possible, just recently passed away the, earlier this year, because this year is a fucking joke on fire, which is really sad. But yeah, they're a huge, huge, huge part of my life. Both me and Matt love them. One of the bands that definitely kind of got us connected and really talking seriously to one another. Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, he goes, Tool, make sure you forget, don't forget Tool. I love Tool, we both love Tool so much. Um, Metallica, I love, I love Metallica, even though they're kind of like, you know, generic and a lot of people are like, oh, whatever. They just are one of those bands that I loved ever since I was really, really little. My uncles like love Metallica and I was like little, like six or seven. And I would just be like, oh my God, this is like, they had a band and they would cover Metallica songs. And I just loved to sit on the step. They would be like in the basement and they would be playing their music so loud. And my mom would be like, you're gonna, you need to put earplugs in. It's too loud down there. And I just loved it. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I just, everything about that sound of like just the classic thrash metal just completely stole my heart forever. Just there's so many, there's so many. I can't, so many metal bands, so, Al Alice in Chains, absolutely one of my favorite bands of all time. They got me through high school. I just, and, and even still to this day, oh my God, my favorite and only, only, the only hippo I like, Bertha. And when I say I like her, I mean love her. I love her. How could you not? Look at her beautiful face, her eyes, her hair, everything about her is perfect. I love her. I just love her so much. So yeah, there's, um, you know, I love, I love Alice in Chains, which is a grunge band. And then I had a very, very prominent scene kid stage that we will definitely have to talk about in a podcast. So I love Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco. Like I was like a f in the fandom, like I was going to every concert. Like I love those bands so much. And then I am a huge, huge, huge fan of One Direction. Always will be. I'm definitely a directioner. And <laughs> I am hugely just in, in love, I guess is the only way to describe it, in love and obsessed with BTS. In, I'm obsessed, they're just perfect. Right now, I would say, God, they're just the, the best band ever. They're, in the, they're just amazing. 
You know, but like they're so different. I can't even begin to compare BTS to Rush or Tool or Meta. You know what I mean? Like they're so different. But I just love, they all have a very, very special place in my heart. And so, yeah, my, my music taste really is all over the place for real. <laughs> but yeah, I, I am definitely one of those people who doesn't even, I don't believe in guilty pleasures. You know, I can be at a metal show and be talking to people and they'll be like, oh, what, what kind of music do you like? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, like I. We're here to see Dream Theater, but I'm I'm also a huge fan of BTS and and One Direction. Like I don't I don't care what people think. like you know I'm I don't I'm not trying to hide any of that stuff because I like what I like you know. And BTS is fucking amazing, but so is Rush. <laughs> and if somebody like if I was at a, like a prog metal show and all these like all these gatekeepy like friggin elitists tried to tell me that BTS isn't talented, I'd be like, what? D- and you d- then you don't know what you're talking about because like clearly they're talented. That's the thing. It's like they're always like, oh, they're they suck. No, they don't. Like when you know Macho Man or like Justin Bieber sucks. It's like, he, no, he doesn't actually. He's actually very very talented. I would love to see you go up on stage and try to sing the way he does. Try to play the play the freaking drums the way he does. He can play instruments. He can write music. He's talented. Just because you don't like their music, doesn't mean that they suck. You know what I mean? So I'm big on that kind of stuff. That'll have to be a whole podcast. Amelia, sweetheart, I just saw you. I don't know what you're trying to get at, but okay. I definitely need the rocks, the money rocks. So <laughs> this will be a good good time for me. Um, but yeah, no, my music taste is all over the place. But yeah, those are just a few of the bands that are super, super special to me. I could go on and on though. Only thing I don't really, really, I love classical music too, and I love instrumental. My, I would say my favorite musician of all time, it's easy for me to say, is Buckethead, who's a guitarist. And is just a staunch, amazing songwriter in, in general. If you've never heard of him, listen to the song Soothsayer. It's probably like his, one of his most popular songs, but it's just a really good song, like generally, that everybody I think can really enjoy. He's probably my favorite artist of all time. Um, But yeah, I just love music. I love classical music. I love orchestral music, music scores, like just uh, film scores in general. God, I could just go on and on. But, um, oh shit, I'm gonna break a few of these rocks, damn it, whatever. Cause I ate, did I eat all those pears? What an idiot. Amanda, you're an idiot. I just want you to know that you're a big, huge, dumb idiot. (laughs) Just want you to know that. I think the only thing I don't really like, is there, there, there's not much I don't like. But I don't like country. I know everybody always says that. I just, I don't. I mean, I, I, there's, you know, some Johnny Cash songs that I love. And everybody says that too. They're like, I, I don't like country except for Johnny Cash. I'm not trying to be that person. I just, I just don't. I like the Dixie Chicks, actually. I fucking love the Dixie Chicks. What am I talking about? Yeah, I, li- I like that. Country? As far as country goes, and Shania Twain. Hell yeah, I fucking love Shania Twain. See, see, I, I don't have to be that basic. I can still, yeah. Shania Twain's a bad bitch. Are you kidding me? And so is, so are the Dixie Chicks. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's the type of country I like. But yeah, I just, I'll, if I like it, I like it. How about that? How about that? So yeah, there's no one group, there's no one like type of music that I'll completely condemn. You know, I feel like there's always gonna be something I can find that I will like. I just love music. At the end of the day, I love music so much. And even when I don't like a music thing, I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, they suck. They're talentless. I understand completely how much work goes into writing and making music. And even if I don't like it, if it just isn't something that I listen to, I'm never gonna be like, that sucks, because it's probably better than what I can do. So yeah, that's my music spiel. (laughs) Who's this? Is this the fucking blow up doll? Oh, he's so scary. Why is this a thing? If you tell me this is Candy with her weird ass eyes, the last thing I need to see. Oh, it's Candy. 